everyone, this is Sean from Ozark Family Homestead and today I want to talk uh, about another tool that we use here on our homestead. So a little history lesson and then we'll get into uh, how this works and, and why I think this is a good uh, firearm to have for your homestead. During the Second World War, the primary rifle used by American troops was the M1 Garand. It was a 30 6 rifle, semi-automatic, 8-shot capacity, and it shot 30 6 uh, widely considered to be one of the most reliable, best rifles ever used by the military. The problem with the old M1 rifle was it weighed 9.5 pounds. It was very long, it was very heavy. Uh, both my grandpas were in the Second World War and they, and they had M1s. And they did talk about it was a great rifle, but it was really, really bulky and heavy. So the military wanted a carbine rifle developed for fast-moving troops like paratroopers and marines and, uh, and also uh, rifles that you could keep inside of a vehicle like a tank or a truck that wasn't so big and bulky. So what was developed by a guy named John Browning was a rifle known as the M1 carbine. Uh, the M1 carbine only weighed 5 pounds and had a 15 shot capacity. Uh, it shoots a 7.62 by 33 millimeter, more commonly known as the 30 caliber carbine. And so I want to show you how this rifle works and why I think it's a, a, a good choice for a homestead. I want to show you this rifle. This is an actual World War II issued M1 carbine. Now, you might be asking, how in the world do I have an old U.S. military M1 carbine? There's something called the Civilian Marksmanship Program. And under the Civilian Marksmanship Program, they took old war surplus rifles, kept them in storage, and periodically they released them to the public where you could purchase these old rifles. And so over 20 years ago, uh, a group of guys I worked with had an opportunity through the Civilian Marksmanship Program to purchase 10 of these. We had to buy a crate of 10 of these rifles. So 10 of us pulled our money together and we bought uh, a case of these old rifles that had been stored away for decades. So these rifles had been used in uh, World War II and also in Korea. When we got the rifles, they were made by uh, various companies. Uh, if you think about in World War II during war production, a lot of companies that made, you know, uh, that maybe made typewriters ended up making guns or equipment, things like that. Uh, this particular rifle was made by the Inland, Inland Division of General Motors, GM, people that make vehicles. Well, they had a plant in Dayton, Ohio, where they made rifles, and they made these M1 carbine rifles. Uh, one of the most popular, as far as a collector's item, of these old rifles are a Singer sewing machine M1 carbines. But this old rifle, it's got right on here that it was manufactured in May of 1944, so just maybe a couple of weeks before the D-Day invasion, this rifle was manufactured uh, to be ready to be sent out uh, to U.S. troops. See a little bit about the features on this rifle. Um, it has a sling. It's mounted on it and there's a little oiler in here in the stock that has oil in it to keep the, the gun lubricated. You can carry two 15 round magazines on the stock and then of course a 15 round magazine. So you have a total of 45 uh, rounds on the rifle itself. Now, during the Second World War, all of the M1s only had 15 round magazines. When they um, began issuing these rifles in the Korean War, they called them the M2 and they made them fully automatic, okay, like a machine gun. Well, the thing is with a little 15 round magazine, you would burn through your ammunition rather quickly. So what they did is they developed a 30 round magazine. So you would have more ammunition and you can put a 30 round magazine in the rifle. Uh, you got twice as many rounds, the only bad thing is, you know, it's a little bulkier, it's, it's not as practical to carry. Uh, I do have 30 round magazines, but I usually don't keep them in the gun for obvious reasons, it's just sticking out 
and just kind of gets in your way. Uh, it's also kind of uh, inconvenient to carry these long magazines. I, I have a uh, an old magazine pouch here. I'll show you that you can put on a belt that carries 30 round magazines. But again, it's just kind of big and bulky. You probably don't want to carry this around all day. So it's really more practical for the little 15 round uh, magazines. And these 15 round magazines are small enough. You can just stick them in your pocket. Okay, so they're a lot easier to, to carry and, and lightweight. So under normal circumstances, uh, you know, I just carry the 15 round magazines. I want to show you how this rifle operates if you're not familiar with the M1. Basically, you've got your magazine release here. You push it in, magazine comes out, load your magazine, insert your magazine, it snaps in, take your book, carry your handle, chamber it, okay? And you have a safety here, just flip it down to fire, and it will shoot at that point. It has what we call a rotary bolt. You can see that it kind of turns. This same type of bolt system is used uh, uh, by Ruger now. If you have a Ruger Mini 14 or Mini 30, they use the same type of bolt. But the M1s, M1 carbines, M14s use this style of top bolt. Uh, the rifle was made to be effective up to 300 yards. And this sight is adjustable. It just it scoots back and forth and has little marks on it for uh, 100 uh 150, 200, and 300 yards. So you can adjust the sight so you can aim directly at the target. Um, the old war ones even have the, the bayonet lug on them as, as well. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, you know, this is great. How in the world would I ever get an old World War II era M1 carbine uh, from my homestead? These are getting to be more difficult. The old war relics are more difficult um, to find, but there are companies that make replicas. They're the, they're the same rifle, they're just new. This one's made by Ivor Johnson, and there's uh, Universal, there's Auto Ordnance, there's other companies that basically still make the old M1 carbine. They're built on the same specs, they look just like it, they use the same magazines, same ammunition, operate the same, but it's just a newer rifle. Uh, so that is something that might be a little easier to find. There are different types of stocks and things like that, that you can get for them, but we found that just staying with the old original stock and everything uh, works really well. Now, getting into why I like this particular rifle for the homestead, here in the Ozarks, uh, it's very wooded, a lot of hills, um, you know, everything is usually pretty close. So a, a shorter range rifle works really well. Now, if we were in Kansas or Nebraska, this wouldn't be maybe as practical because you, you, a lot of times you need longer range rifles uh, in flatlands and open areas. But here in the Ozarks, this shorter range rifle works very well. It's, you know, it was, it was made military spec, so, you know, it's dependable. It's rugged. It works really well. The other thing that is kind of a, a legal issue that uh, is something you might consider is, you know, these rifles are, you know, like this one right here, it's, it's uh, you know, next year, less than a year, it's going to be 80 years old. I and mean, it's an old relic. And it doesn't really look that menacing. So some places that have uh, strict gun laws, uh, it's difficult or maybe even impossible to buy something like an AR-15. Uh, but you might still be able to legally buy these rifles because of their age, because they don't have all the accessories on them. Uh, sometimes these rifles are okay to have, even if you can't have the more modern rifles, and they're just as effective. Um, and, and you don't really get as much of a negative reaction from some people where, you know, let's say that you're walking around uh, on your homestead and someone sees you and you're carrying some modern day all tacked out with all the bells and whistles on it rifle, someone might go, ooh, that you know, guy looks like he's, you know, causing trouble or something like that. You, you won't usually get that type of reaction out of this rifle because it's just an old looking rifle. There's not really, you know, it doesn't really scare people as much and things like that. So there's something to consider uh, that it's just, you know, just an, an old, uh, you know, 80 year old designed rifle 
uh, that might not get as much negative reaction, so that's another benefit to having it. You know, every time I look at this rifle, I always wonder who all it was issued to. Was it in the Pacific Theater with the Marines? Was it in the European Theater with the Army? Um, you know, the stories it could tell. And I'm just really proud to, to own a piece of history. I've always loved history, uh, especially uh, World War II history. So this is really a, a privilege to own uh, a piece of, of World War II history. You know, if you have an opportunity to get an M1 carbine, I, I think it's, it makes a great addition to the homestead. It's just a very versatile, dependable rifle. Uh, and I don't think you'll ever regret if you if you get one. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Uh, give us a thumbs up. And until next time. Thanks for watching.